Hello everybody and welcome back to the Night Garden. So this is going to be us talking to you about art today, but not quite yet because we are now on to Gen 5 Oof. of the Pokemon tier list. Five. Excuse me. Five Goodness. whole gens. <laughs> Honestly, oh. this has been a nice break from doing some of the more intensive stuff, so I hope that you guys are enjoying these. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, it's been five weeks now. <laughs> Yeah, not back to back though. No, but you know. Uh, anyways, we are on to Gen Five, which is black and white. Um, I played this game. I, I did, know you had it too. I did play black, but I did not finish it. Yep. This might be a generation where we forget names or get names wrong. So, yeah, because uh, <laughs> this is where black was the last last game that I bought. Indeed. So, like, anything past this, no guarantees. The <laughs> only way we know them is Pokemon Go. Right? Oh, that's very true. Or Arceus, maybe. Yeah, Arceus. But... I mean, even with Arceus, I only played, like, two hours into it. Yeah, that's true. But let's go on and start with the normal types. All right. Ooh, and this one has, like, an extra amount of gimmicky goof Pokemon. We'll just disregard them. Yeah. Um, I do really enjoy Deerlings and uh, Sawsbuck. I love them so much. The fact that Sawsbuck, the S-A-W-S, is spring, autumn, winter, and summer. Yeah. Was just, or summer, autumn, winter, and spring. Well, in their names. And then you've got the, um, puppies in this. Oh, Lillipop. Yep. And, uh, Herdeer and Stoutland. Yeah, I think that they're adorable. And then Audino is always really cool. I think, honestly, out of all of these, I have to go with Deerling, the autumn form. Ooh, the cute little orange guy. Yeah, it's so <laughs> cute. Yeah, and honestly, I absolutely love the deer in this one. I think they are so cool because they literally made playing the game in different seasons important. Right. And different regions in the game and stuff. So uh, I'm going to go with... I think I'm going to go with Deerling, but I'm going to go with the little uh, pink one for okay. spring. So you're spring, I'm autumn. Oh my, that's... Aligns with our uh, wow. birthdays. It sure does. <laughs> It sure does. Wow. Fire types. There's better fire types here. Immediately, immediately, I need to go for Chandelure. <laughs> I am not even surprised. <laughs> and immediately, I need to go for Valcarona. <laughs> because I love Larvesta and I love Valcarona. I think, I'm pretty sure that's the name of that moth, fire moth. But okay. I could be wrong because, whoops. But anyways, right. onwards to water already. Immediately, I need to go for Frillish. <laughs> Another ghost. Another blue, ghost. Pink. Uh, blue. Blue, he gets a big old mustache. Yeah, I do like the evolved form of the pink one better, but I like the blue Frillish better. Right. Uh, I don't care for any of these water types, honestly, but I did have a Swana on my team when I played this game. Okay. Um, there's a lot of good grass types here. There are. There are a buttload of good grass types. Oh, dang. Got Sawaddle. Yeah, I've got my little buggy boys. Got and Whimsicott. Obviously, obviously the Deerlings. The Deerlings. I ah. think, though, like, I really enjoy the Mushrooms. I have to go for a Moongus. <laughs> oh, man. It's competitive nightmare. <laughs> Ah, uh, but me, where do I go? Do I go with some of the bugs, or do I go with... Because I had a Lilligant on my team. I had a Saucebuck on my team. Not good balance there, but... Right. Uh, I guess Saucebuck okay. fall. Oh, so you abandoned your spring yearling. <laughs> yeah. Electric. I do like the Lamprey electrics but i think out of all of these i have to go for joltik <laughs> the teeny tiny itty bitty he's really cute <laughs> yeah and i i really like joltik as well i'm actually gonna up it to garbantula okay and ice <laughs> oh no the freaking ice creams are here <laughs> vanillish uh, vanillite and vanillox i i really enjoy cub chew 
Right? The big old snot bubble boy? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna be with you there and say cub chew on that one. Fighting type. Ooh. There's some cool fighting types in this gen. Yeah, the weird legendaries. Yeah. I gotta go for Pig Knight here. Ooh, starter rep. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. Meanwhile, I think this one is named Mind Shao. I cannot remember, but I thought that it was cute looking because it looked like Looks a cat. Looks like a cat, yeah. Poison! Ooh, Ooh. uh, Scolipede. <laughs> but literal trash. I know, right? Uh, bug bias here, Scolipede all the way. Yeah, Scolipede is cool. And ground types. Ooh, Drillber and Excadrill here. The, yeah. The Sandile line. I like, uh, Crocodile. Yeah? Yeah. Ooh, he's a good guy. There's, this is also where the Iron Giant comes in. Yep. <laughs> Go lurk. Honestly, Excadrill is pretty dang cool. Right. All right. Flying. Flying type. I do really enjoy Swoobat. Ooh. I like Sig that's Siglyph. Yeah. Or Sigilyph. Yeah. And I also like Volibee. <laughs> A diaper Pokemon. And not, not that one, but the evolution oh. of it. Um, Mandibuzz. Okay, Mandibuzz, yeah. But I think I have to go for Swoobat here. My bat bias. Aw, Swoobat. It's got a little heart on its nose. He does. I'm going Sigilyph. Okay. Easy. I thought that was such a cool, interesting Pokemon to tie with, like, the unknowns. Right. Psychic. Honestly, these aren't my favorite Psychics. I do enjoy Musharna a lot. I also like Victini. And I did really enjoy the Gotharita and Gothitelle line. And, like, the Cell Pokemon is really cool, too. <laughs> Reninculus or whatever it was. Yeah, I think here, though, I'm gonna go for Meloetta. Meloetta, ooh. I don't even see her. This is hard, because I really don't like any of them. Sigilyph. <laughs> Doubling up. Bugs! Bugs. I love... So oh, no, there are so many good bugs. I need to go with the one that's the evolution of Dwebble. Crustle. Yeah, Crustle. He looks like a layer cake. And I, I understand <laughs> that it's sedimentary rock, but he very much looks like a layer cake. And that is just Delicious. charming to me. There are so many good ones here in this gen. They did good on their bugs. <laughs> I had one of him, an Escavalier, on my team. And I thought he was the coolest guy. The funny kissy helmet, shelmet guy. Yeah. But I gotta go with... Uh, Sawaddle. Sawaddle. He's so cute. Rock types. I'm not a fan of rock types, but I do really like the evolution of the Tirtuga. Is it Tirtuga? Yeah, those. I like him. All right, he works. Rock type, I got bugs and I got hermit crab. <laughs> ghosts. Ooh, there's good ghosts in this. Ooh. Uh, I, I gotta go with the uh, Coffer Gigas. Yeah? Yeah. Pretty cool. The yeah mask is really sad because the mask that they're carrying is what they were when they were alive. Yeah. But I don't have the chandelier that you do. I love chandelier. He was also one of the Pokemon on my team in this gen. But I I think I like the appeal of Lampin a I little like, bit better. I like all three of them, honestly. They are great. Yeah. They are so good. All right, dragon type. Dragon type. Oh my gosh. I forget what they're called. The third evolution of Axew. Uh, Haxorus? Yeah. Yeah, he's pretty cool. I think that's my guy. He's got cool colors. Yeah, I do like his colors. And he kind of looks centipede-y. Mm, I can see it. I thought that it was funny that they used German for this guy of Eins. Zwei, dry. dry. Yeah. Um, I don't like Zvilus's wings. I think they're really dumb in his little feet, but he's a Hydra. But I think I gotta go with uh, Zvilus. I think that was his name. You just said Zvilus for the third one. Ein Zwei, dry. Yeah. Uh, I gotta go for Lipard here. Ooh, of the darkness. Types. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely adore Purloin, and Lipard was Purloin tipped forward on all fours. <laughs> oh man, Zoroark, though? Zoroark is good. Crocodile, but I already have him. Mandibuzz. These are all good dark types. They are. The, oh my gosh, that guy. The man. 
Scraggy? Yeah, I love Scraggy. I think that was his name. <laughs> Just looks like an emo kid. Yeah, he does. He reminds me of the chameleon from Animal Crossing. I think I'm gonna go with the crocodile here. Okay. Steel types, uh, I gotta go for Barathorn here. Because I liked the plant steel dynamic. Yeah. Super, super weak to fire. I know. Meanwhile, I gotta go with my S Cavalier, my boy. Your boy. Whimsicott. <laughs> Not much of options. I mean, I don't think Fairy was introduced yet in this gen. I don't know. No, I think Fairy was introduced in... Six? Six. Maybe. Because the... Or the one of the legendaries was a fairy in that one. Right. Your starter from this gen. This is hard because, like, I do like the starters in this gen, but I think the middle evolution of Oshawott is probably my favorite. Oh yeah. Yeah, I like all three of them, but I th I liked his design the most. Mm -hmm. I'm actually there with you on that one. Um, I actually never picked Oshawott. I picked Oshawott in Arceus. I think I picked Snivy. Yeah. I think I actually might have picked Tepig, because I was like, he's so cute! And then I thought he got awful yeah. as he evolved, and I was really disappointed. I do enjoy Pig Knight. He's a funny guy. All right, gimmick forms. Um, We've really only got Mega Odno and Mega... I gotta go door. for Mega Trash Boy. Mega Trash Boy. I'm with you there, honestly. <laughs> I do like Mega Audino, but it's a very different vibe. And now Legendaries. I like Victini. I already picked Meloetta for something. I mean, you can pick it again if you don't like any of these other ones nearly as much. But I do like Victini. Yeah, you want Victini? Yeah. All right. And I really don't care for any of them. Honestly, like, Meloetta is pretty cool. I don't even know how you get Meloetta. I don't but... either. I got it in uh, Pokemon Go, I think. Yeah, I did too. But after thinking about it, I think the Verizian reminds me of the Tallnecks from Horizon Zero Dawn. And I think that has boosted my appreciation of it. I can totally so see much. that. <laughs> That's awesome. But now the challenge of narrowing down your favorite, if it's even a challenge. It's not. Chandelier. <laughs> well, sheesh. <laughs> okay, then. Meanwhile, I have, like, bugs galore here. And, oh, man, these guys are so good. They're such little guys. They es are. Escavalier is so great. But, like, this fire moth... I go he back to this really fire neat. moth so much. Yeah. But, like, this jousting, armor-clad beetle. I know. Like, and then this little guy. Honestly. These little guys. Yeah, Sawaddle is so good. Dwebble is like a Paris that just has a little rock on his back. It's a shy Paris. <laughs> it's a shy Paris. Gosh, but... Uh, Man, there's too many good ones. <laughs> you and, gotta oh pick man, one. Garvantula, like... Gotta pick one. And Deerling. I know, and little guy, little Deerling, and his dad. <laughs> his dad? <laughs> I gotta go with Valcarona. Alright. If that's even your name. <laughs> if that's who you are. If that's truly your name. <laughs> there we go another ghost that makes your fourth ghost <laughs> yeah i'm not even surprised and only my second bug but... yeah i'm kind of surprised by your picks honestly anyways i get to draw a fire moth i'm excited for my fire ghost all right and here we go here we go three two one so I'm going to start us off here with a Valcarona. Corona. Volcarona. After Volcano. Volcano and Vulcan. Here are my children. Yeah. Where's Volcarona going? Because, like, this thing is at least two feet taller than anyone else in this drawing. <laughs> yeah, Valcarona's like 5'8 or something like that. 5'11. So Valcarona is also this, like cool bug <laughs> giant moth yeah i can and, feel uh, my best friend cringing yeah 
I can also feel myself cringing over not knowing how to... <laughs> where to even go with this. Like... Shapes, babe. Yeah, I know. Look at your shapes. I'm looking at shapes. They are shapey. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shape. That's a shape. Yep. There we go. Yeah. And then we've got some wingadings going on, and some wingadings going on, and some wingadings. Hmm. So, I did sketches of this, and I liked the sketch that I did. And now I'm like, alright, how the fuck do I recreate that damn sketch? Okay, so your shapes are wrong for that, because the way that you have your shapes oriented, that's for a head-on. You want your head to be kind of, like, if you picture the top of your, your kind of pointed circle there being the body, then the circle for your head, you'd want to actually be in front of the top of that, because that's where the head would connect, right? Oh my Christ. All right, so Valcarona. We've got a soikle. Soikle. And then we've got another kind of body shape thing here going on. And then we've got the cute wings, which, you know, I never thought that these shapes for these damn wings would be challenging, because it's like, I've drawn these shapes before. Mm hmm They're my leaf shapes. Pretty much, yeah. And now I'm just like, which angle do I go at for these friggers? Um... Whenever I'm trying to do something like that, I just turn the canvas the way that, like, I know it's going to be easiest for me to make that curve. But, uh... Oh, that's cute. Right? That is really cute. Yeah. You, you've got this kind of thing where you want them evenly spaced, right? So, I, it would actually be easier to do your bottom wings first, and then do your middle wing once you have the top and bottom established, so that it looks like it's overlaid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, that's not right. I like how fat you have it. It's a fat fuck! <laughs> it's a... It's a moth! Yeah! It's a big old fire moth. It's five foot eight, so it's towering over me. I thought it was 5'11". I know that one of my other ones is 5'11". That is yet to be released. Well, now I'm pulling up the Pokedex. Good, because we need to learn about this fucker and how he's a sun deity. Look at this silly little man. Volcarona. Number 637. Its burning body causes it to be unpopular in hot parts of the world, but in cold ones, Volcarona is revered as an embodiment of the sun. This Pokemon scatters burning scales. Most of the danger of these scales is not in their heat. It's in the way they rob the surrounding air of oxygen. Hmm. And it's 5'3". Five, 5'3". Three. Five, three. It's as big as me. Yep. It is literally the size of a, a ledge. It's the size of a ledge. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hell yeah. Oh wait, it's got it's got a point on it the bottom of its uh mouth too. Yep, and it's also got fuse. Fuse it's, it's a fusey boy. Fuzzy fuzzy, he's fuzzy. It's a fuzzy little guy. He's a talk bubble. <laughs> he's a talk bubble. Yeah, look at his face. He's just a little God damn it! It's just a little talk <laughs> bubble. He's like, look, see? Just a talk bubble. Yeah, kind of. Upside down teardrop. I feel like my stabilization is not high enough. And it is... There we go. <laughs> now it's at 80. Why is it so high? Because I need it. Okay. <laughs> There are other Pokedexes entries. Oh, that's right. About this man. I can... That and was Those ones were off of Pokemon.com. I can look for different ones. Yeah, so is Celebi is probably your best bet to find more of them. Um, Bulbapedia? Yeah, Bulbapedia. Like, some of them that I read were very interesting, considering my previous selection of Frostlass. 
because Frostlass was all about, like, grabbing and freezing the, uh, and keeping the other Pokemon as, or, like, anybody as gifts and presents and things like that. So it was really funny to, uh, see it and kind of be like, oh, this one has been known to, like, seek out Pokemon or people that are cold and, um, help them. Mm -hmm. So it's, like, the exact opposite of Frostlass. They're, like, combating they, forces. They, like, you're pretty. I can, I can freeze you. In <laughs> <laughs> um, Sword and Shield, Volcarona scatters burning scales. Some say it does this to start fires. Others say it's trying to rescue those that suffer in the cold. See? This Pokemon emerges from a cocoon formed of raging flames. Ancient murals depict Volcarona as a deity of fire. Yeah, uh, and, like, it's an ancient Pokemon kind of thing, but it's not legendary by any means. Right. <laughs> in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, uh, as it flies, it scatters, scatters its flaming scales. It was feared by ancient people who referred to it as the Rage of the Sun. According to legends, it was hatched from a flaming cocoon to save people and Pokemon that were suffering from the cold. Help! It's just a little guy. Just a little guy. He's just a little guy. He's here to help. He wants you to be warm, but also he will burn you to fucking a crisp and right. also suck all of the oxygen out of the air. Suck <laughs> the oxygen out of the air. <laughs> you know, like you do. In XY, Omega, Ruby, and Alpha Sapphire, the this is the combined dexes. The a sea of fire engulfs surro the surroundings of their battles since they use their six wings to scatter their ember scales. When volcanic ash darkened the atmosphere, it is said Volcarona's fire provided a replacement for the sun. A sea of fire engulfs the surrounding of their battles. Okay, it's the same for... Uh, X is the same as Omega Ru Ruby, and Y is the same as Alpha Sapphire. Yeah, they kind of duplicate it after a while. Yeah. And then in Black, White, and Black 2, White 2... In Black and White, it's the same as X and Y... Black 2 and White 2, thought to be an embodiment of the sun, it appeared during the bitterly cold winter and saved the Pokemon from freezing. Yeah, it's just a good little guy. Yeah! Now I gotta try to figure out, like, angles and shapes and stuff, like, because it's a rounded guy. Yep. So trying to figure out, it's really fat over on this side. It is really fat on that side. Also, mm. I think you have your um, your perspective wrong on his little ear dilly bobs. Because of the way that they wrap around his face, mm -hmm. you probably wouldn't be able to see the bottoms. You have them going straight down as oh, opposed to like, right. wrapping. They do kind of go more over here and like down and around and stuff. Yep. Ah. Dropping my tablet pen here. Oh, be careful. Mm -hmm. So, with these now... Oh, they're on a different layer from the body. So... These do more of, like, a curl-in. Yep. Like that. Yeah. Yeah, that looks a bit better. Yep. And then they've got some... Lots of, like, lines and, like, perceived segments Yeah. on this one. Well, I mean, look at how a moth looks. Like, it's got, it's got, like, fuzzies and stuff, so... Yeah. And the, the translation of this, like, these horns from, like, furry, fuzzy moth... Um, antenna? Antenna is very interesting. Like, I wouldn't anticipate this, like, weird, like, side face going on. Right. The eyes are also just weird. Well, the way that the eyes are, um, you'd probably only see one of those lines. You'd see the one that's going, like, vertically. Because, like, straight on with that X, you only see, like, the you see it through the lower curve, and you're looking at it from above, right? Right. So it's an interesting angle that you've chosen to draw this in. Yeah, I kind of want to just go with fat and cute, <laughs> in a way, too, because, like... You and your bugs. Bugs! <laughs> explodes off screen. 
Yep. Because, like, yeah, these are... They're... It's so weird. These, like, crisscross eyes. And it's like, bugs have weird compound eyes. They do. But, like, that's just weird. I mean, um, there are some bugs that do have, like, X patterns in their eyes, too. Yeah, that's very true. And I gotta find where this little... This, like, line kind of failed at being straight. How does one draw a thing? We just don't know a thing. Really fat lines. Really fat lines. Really, really, really fat lines. <laughs> Alright, I, I like the wing-like sketches that I did, and now I'm worried that I'm not going to be able to... Just kidding, I'm amazing. <laughs> You're so silly. Look at that. Yeah, that looks really good. Uh oh. That AD stabilization is definitely helping you. See? This is the secret, everybody. The secret that they don't tell you. Oh, but artists hate this one trick that. Don't start <laughs> clickbaiting. Please, for the love of all. Artists hate this one trick. No. <laughs> We artists hate getting sold to and clickbaited. Artists hate this one trick. I'm gonna throw you. This side, that wing is definitely wrong because it's meant to be this like we. <laughs> we. And then these like center wings, they just look. Look at really... this fat man. Yeah. Maybe Volcarona's coming in to save everybody from the Frostlass. That's what I was saying! Like, the Frostlass is like, you're all my friends and toys now. And the Volcarona's just like, no you're not, bitch! Bitch! Volcarona. What do you think you're doing? She's beautiful. The problem that I'm giving myself is that I'm not closing, like, any of these lines. Well, why are the you fuzz. like this? Because, like, the aesthetic of the fuzz, like, having those broken lines in the fuzz, it's kind of nice and pretty. It is nice and pretty because it makes it feel like it's lightweight. Yeah. And this is also why I hate the There's fill tool. a slight tangent Yeah, there. you have a tangent right there through your, uh... Well, you know what? Antenna. The tangent is gonna have to just sit down. Oh, you make me so sad. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You've seen it, now fix it. <laughs> nope. It's gonna drive me crazy. Uh, oh, well, I guess I'll get the keys. Cause, uh... Ayo. Look at this little silly fella. I hate that tangent. Now it's all I can see. Oh my Christ! <laughs> Fine, I'll ruin you, the perfect wing! You don't have to wing. do it with the wing! Oh my god, just fix the one in the antenna! Ugh. You make your life so hard for no reason. Nope. There we go. He's lopsided. And also, he's gonna be like... I keep saying he, but, you know, it's a Pokemon. Yeah. The... Boop. 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 You're a bit big. A little bit. Size-wise, I think it actually... It's right <laughs> compared to the rest of them, it's, yeah. It's probably a little... Because if it's squashed down... Then, um, size-wise, yeah, it's a little, uh... Alright, let's scale and... Just kinda... I don't wanna, like... I don't like the wings, the center wings. They look way too small. Because they are, they're not the same size as the other ones. One of the, the easiest ways to actually, like, figure out wingspan is to make a circle around what you're doing and try and get the tips to hit the edge of the circle. Yeah, like, these wings on this side are nice. Because if you actually took, like, one of the upper or lower wings and then just, like, turned it, that would give you the same size of wingspan. Ah! What did you just do? I duplicated but, all of him. But why? Because <laughs> I wasn't trying to. That's why. I wanted to only have my hands on the... It is just... 
chaos watching you draw sometimes. <laughs> there are the wings. Oh, my goodness. Well, all but one. Most of the wing. <laughs> this was the wing? No. This is the wing. This is the wing. I was gonna... Because I like this side of them. I don't really like the left side. So we'll just... What don't you like about Ooh. it? Looks bad. <laughs> Descriptive. They can hang out there. And then we can go back to the wings. And we can delete this side. Or we won't, because why would it work that way? <laughs> Unselect, fucker. <laughs> Are you okay? Alright, now we grab the good wings, and we move the good wings. We no. We move the good wings... We move the good... <laughs> yeah? Are you moving the good wings? We move the... We... We move... We, we move... We... What is we happening? Move, we move the good wings, and then we find where that other fake wing is. And it's on the body. Get it out of here. Wee. Not wingy enough to be in the wing club. No, fuck that. Yeah, this looks a lot nicer, I think. I think so, too. It's more consistent. It creates a tangent. Oh, my... You! <laughs> you! And your tangents. Listen. This isn't a podcast. There are no tangents. The longer that we do this, the more I'm going to call out when you have mistakes. <laughs> Because I love you, and I see how you're doing it's better. It's an artistic choice. No, an, ar uh, an artistic choice will never have a tangent. It's an artistic decision. Fine. <laughs> Why is this eraser a bajillion miles big? It's an artistic choice. <sighs> He knows what he's doing. Listen to that giggle. Look at this fella. Alright, now we merge down in the body. There's a few stray. Yeah, um... I think this is looking really good, but can I give you another tip? Now what? Your... So, if you look at your reference, the uh, fur kind of comes out like a flower, like an upside-down... Uh, like a mm. bluebell or something. Um, you just kind of have it like going at, like a little tuft. I think it, you need to bring it down further and have a little bit of it floofing outwards. Because the way that you currently have it, there's no room for its uh, little it's got feeties. Little feeties. Look at these little feeties. They're so tiny. <laughs> They're so little. <laughs> <laughs> little feet. <laughs> All right, so you want me to... I would just do a new layer over top instead of erasing everything. Well, I need to erase it eventually. You do need to erase it eventually, but instead of messing up your body, you still have your body underneath until you're happy with what's over top. You get what I'm saying? Faloof. <sighs> It is too early, and I have not had enough coffee to be talkative. I say at 11 o'clock in the morning. That's pathetic. <laughs> I'm tired. This is looking much better already. I think that just bringing that top part down a little bit gives it enough room for those legs to be bigger and you 
you're still not quite getting that kind of bluebell look to it, but it's a better shape overall that you've got going on. Yeah. What do you think? Do you like it better than your first attempt? I think the fuzz looks better just because I didn't make it look like shit. <laughs> <laughs> You're so mean to yourself. What do you mean, bluebell? Like, uh, the flowers. The bluebell flowers. I cannot say that I know what that looks like off my head. Um, we have these in, well, a uh, form of these in our, uh, yard. This is a bluebell. Oh, okay. So do you see how I'm seeing that in your reference photo? Yeah. I still really don't like those middle wings. Like, do they need to start up bigger? They don't need to start up bigger, they just need to come out more. But then they look like they're just long for no reason. Honestly, the middle wings on this guy always bugged me. Why is that? I don't know, they just look dumb. I mean, to be fair, you don't really need six wings to fly. It seems like too much happening. Well, no, because it's like the seraphim sort of symbolism there. Yeah. With it being like a legendary type thing and an almost angelic aspect of going and saving freezing people or whatever. But... Right. And also, it's kind of reminiscent to, like, uh... Um... There's also, like, light and darkness imagery and stuff that's going on here. Alright, I think that about does it. There we go, look at this sweet, precious... Lady. <laughs> it looks good. There we go. <laughs> and now, we get to watch you, Drew Trandalure. Was that English? <laughs> yes. Not good English. <laughs> On to the chandelure. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to this, boy. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. All right, All right. let's get this shit show on the road. Chandelure. Chandelure. Yay! So this is one that's, like, very much similar to, like, um, Will-O-Wisps and that kind of stuff, with it starting as a little candle and then a lantern and then the yep. chandelier style thing. And it's actually considered the luring Pokemon. <laughs> because Will-O-Wisp. Yeah. I find it funny that um, this one is like so ghosty and spooky and so cute, but the fires are like this blue-purple. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, because blue is said to have like an ethereal energy type thing. Yeah. It's like a magical fire. Oh, uh, And I wonder if part of that was because it it's such a hot flame. It has to be really hot to be blue. Yeah. And I can't imagine that back in the days of old and yore where these things were, like, considered... The days of yore! Like, I'm sure that they didn't get exposure to a lot of blue fire because it, they couldn't get anything hot enough. Right. But, and also, like, swamp gas, the answer to all questions. It's always swamp gas. So the Pokedex entry for this lovely little guy is it absorbs a spirit, which it then burns. <laughs> okay. No chill. By waving the flames on its arms, it puts its foes into a hypnotic trance. Interesting. And being consumed in Chandelier's flame burns up the spirit, leaving the body behind. Spirits burned up in its ominous flame lose their way and wander this world forever. So, like, it's... A rude-ass piece of shit. Yeah, right? Most ghosts are. Look but... at how cute it is, but it's just like, tee -hee. And then it's just I'm like... I'm gonna fuck up your whole <laughs> afterlife. Yeah. Jeez. Like, how rude. <coughs> you okay? Bless me, yes. This Pokemon haunts dilapidated mansions. It sways its arms to hypnotize opponents with its ominous dancing of its flames... In homes illuminated by chandelier instead of lights, funerals were a constant occurrence. Or okay. so it said. So, it doesn't just grab, like, dead spirits. It just sucks them out of other people, I guess. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Jeez. Freaking rude, wow. 
I mean, for are... something so cute, it's a little bastard. Right? And, you know, 10-year-olds just kind of carry him around and yep. whatever. Whatever. Another small guy at three feet tall and three inches. Why is everything I'm drawing except for Haunter three foot? <laughs> right? I mean, when we base things based off of, like, being, like, kind of cute... What's cuter than a teeny Small. tiny little guy? Yeah. Like dog size kind of thing. Small. Yep. But I liked Chandelure, honestly. It was a really cute design that I thought, and the fact that people would be like, oh man, like they give they give Trubbish such a hard time, they give Klefki such a hard time, and it's like, dude, Litwick was a candle. Yeah, right. Lampant was a lamp. Chandelure is literally just a little chandelier guy. Yeah. Like, it's just kind of like, calm down, my friends. Like, do you want your anthropomorphic monsters or not? Like, <laughs> Right? I had a Lampant on my team in this series. Did you? Yeah. I thought that he was way too cute to pass up. And I can't even remember who the starters are in this gen. <laughs> I don't remember. What gen is this again? It's gen 5. Gen 5? Who are the gen 5 starters? Very forgettable, obviously. <laughs> Whoops. Google. Google is a friend. Um. Alright, there's my sketch. Let me try and make this look presentable. Generation 5. If I seem like I am kind of done with drawing, it is because I am. It has been a very busy month, and I've done nothing but draw, <laughs> so I'm kind of like, I need a break. Uh, how do I look at the Pokemon? Oh, how do I? Oh, how do I? Can I just get a list of the Pokemon from this game, please? Nope. Please? Too hard. Please! Please! Please, I beg you. Oh my gosh, yeah, I'm having a hard time. I have to go to Pokemon.com for my Pokedex. Right. All right. I'm going to take some design liberties with this because I'm not trying to go for Pokemon style necessarily. Oh no, this is going to be impossible to look up. Maybe Pokemon Go will help me better. <laughs> Pokemon Go might be able to help you better. They, they seem to separate it out pretty nicely into the generations. And the regions and all that stuff, so... Right. <laughs> the shiny on this is fun, because it just goes to red. Yeah. It's just a cute little red guy. Snivy, Tepig, and Oshawott. Yeah, so, real, real losers. <laughs> like, I don't even think I use my starter... At the end, because I just was so uninterested in the starters in this gen. What game is this one? This is Black and White. Oh god, I can't even remember playing that game. Yeah. At least I'm pretty sure it's Black and White, if it's Kalos region, which I think was the one that was based on France. Yeah, that's the one based on France. So, like... Yep. Yep. <laughs> Um, one, two, three, four, five. No, it's Unova. We are very wrong. We are very wrong. When there's so many different places. Isn't Kalos the one that is Sword and Shield? That's the England one? No, that's Galar. Oh, right, because Galarian Kalos, things are a thing. Kalos is France. I was, We were right about that, but it is not Gen 5. Gen 6 is Kalos. Okay. Yep. Whoopsies. But, yeah, I remember I picked Tepig because I thought Tepig was going to be cute. And then he turned into this huge... He's cool as heck, but not my preferred fire type. <laughs> right. And it's one of those matters of, can we just have the guys that start on all fours stay on all fours? Right. And then Oshawott and Duat here they are standing on their hind feet just being like, hey, what up, MFers? And then they s slap Samurott down on all fours and it's like, can you pick make one. up your mind? Pick one. Bipedal or quadruped. Can't have both. And then Snivy just all up 
loses all of his limbs. Right. Comes a snack. Snack, snack, snack. Oh, that's who I had. I had Snivy. Yeah. yeah. You didn't play this one much because I think we alluded to you were in college or whatever. So yeah, I was in sleeping. college at the time and I was not sleeping. Yep. Man, I gave up on a lot of cool guys for Valcarona. Well, yeah, because you have a one-track mind when it comes to bugs. But this also had Crustle and Dwebble. Yes, I know. Like, there are... And also the Deerlings. Yep. Like, there are a lot of really cutesy guys in this one. I still need a Valcarona in Pokemon Go, apparently. I don't think I have a Valcarona in Pogo either. Yeah, you need like 400 candies. I don't think I even have the first one. Yeah, it's a hatch only. Oh, yeah, I probably so don't it's, have it. And it's a rare hatch. Yeah. So if anybody wants to be Pokemon Go friends, like... Uh, yeah, leave a comment below and ask for our friend codes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Look at this silly, silly. I'm taking my sweet time on this line art, despite this being a uh, live draw. Where Where's your stabilization? It's there. Is it at 80? No. Why not? Because I can't freaking deal with it at 80. It's at 8. What? That's nothing. That's like farting. That's, <laughs> That's farting? It is. 8 is nothing. Um, This is actually not far enough over. What? Look at these sillies. Ah, the sprite is funny because the fire on the uh, that the reference earring, which is sword and shield, apparently uh -huh. the reference you're looking at, the fires on like the smaller candles, um, are just like straight to points. <laughs> they yeah. don't even look like fire in this reference, They're which just... I'm not gonna wind up doing. That's why I said uh, like I'm taking some liberties when it comes to. The design because i'm not going for pokemon <laughs> style i'm just kind of doing a cutesy generalized cartoon style for these so yeah <laughs> he's just a ball he is he's just a little ball friend but he is not ball sack <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. What was his name? Balsaf? Balsaf, yeah. Oh no. Um Tales of Arise, everybody. Tales of yeah. Arise. Along with Pokemon and Final Fantasy, one of the series that we like to play is the Tales of series. So Tales of Symphonia, Tales of Zesteria, Tales of uh Berseria, Tales of Graces, Tales of Vesperia, Tales, Tales of Zillia. Of Zillia. And so the most recent one was Tales of Arise, and I never wanted to get it because it was so expensive, and I was like, I don't have money right now. And it just recently went on sale for 15 bucks, and I was like, yeah, sure, I'll get it. Started playing it, and I am just roasting it yep. so hard. Like, I feel bad almost roasting it as hard as I am, but I don't know. Compared to the other games, this one just feels so... It's not great. Weird. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it'll grow on us. Maybe we'll get through. We're already eight hours in, and I bought it like two days ago. Are but we really? Jesus. I was training a lot because... Did I sleep through half of it? Because I don't remember it. No. No, you weren't sleeping. It was just a lot of it was grinding because, like, the monster challenge, like, exploded. I feel like any time a monster hits me, it t puts me down to half health. So, I don't know. It's just... Something's going on in that game. <laughs> I like his little exploded out top. Yeah, right? He's section. Fun. And, like, it reminds me of... It, it does honestly remind me of um, gas lanterns. And, like, the little one that we have, the petroleum lamp uh -huh. that we have... That doesn't have actual petroleum in it. Yeah. But it has a little wick inside, and it kind of has those cute little fun designs and the flares. Yep. You know, I think it would be fun to take, like, one of these item Pokemon. And turn it into something else. And, like, change the design, but keep the main aesthetic of, like, it's a lamp ghost that deals with fire. Right. And, like, 
Yeah, I think that could be fun. Maybe we'll do that. That would be fun, doing, like, alternatives, like, uh, uh, like, Poltegeist would be really fun. Well, they already did that with their own Poltegeist. Yeah, I know. The green team matcha yeah. variety. So, yeah, I guess it would just be making our own, uh, regional variants now that I think of that. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, it, it, that's the thing about the items, is sky's the limit when you're making things based on items. Right. A clef key. Yeah. A set of keys. Well, how about medieval keys? Right. How about a skeleton key? Like... Yeah. (laughs) I'm taking entirely too much time on this. I don't know. I think it's cool. The grating. Yeah. The metal, like, grates and stuff that is part of its body. I think that's cool looking. And you're adding, like, partial shading while you're going, so that later you don't have to... Yeah, it's because it's it's all black. Like, like and it's obviously not a pure black, because nothing is pure black when you're doing highlights and stuff, but, like, it's meant to be raw iron, which is black, so... Yeah, which I learned about. It is not bright-ass orange. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, this is cool already. I really like it. Very much just even behind the sketch, or in front of the sketch, it looks very 3D-esque. And, like, has that, I don't know what to call it, not balance, but the, um... I don't know the word, but, like, the 3D-esque, it looks like it has depth. That's the that's, that's the, word. the word. Depth. Yep. You got there! I found it. <laughs> I did a word good. You did a word good. Wow. Words are hard. Wow, wow. Words are very hard. Yeah. They sure are. Alright. I think this is starting to come together. I've got my ball in place, at least. Yay, balls! I'm most excited to see the fire, because... Fire is one of my favorite things to kind of design, because you can get out there with it and still have it look very realistic. Also, I have just started editing one of our other New vs. Pro videos, and in two, uh, we do three different drawings each in that video, and in two of the drawings that you do, you have fire that you have to do. So, like, just thinking about the methods that you did there, and that was red fire, I'm, like, so intrigued to think about what you're going to be doing for... Well, I would probably approach it differently with this because of... um, Oh, this looks like it's going to be hell to make it flat like that. Because, like, Chandelure looks like he's mostly, like, circular, bulky, rounded. Mm -hmm. And now you're doing it, like, as this flat... Oh, I like it, though. (laughs) I really do like that aspect. Ooh! Flat boy! Um, but what I was saying, uh, one of the things I really enjoy drawing is wrought iron. So, like, mm. this is part of why I'm like, oh, yeah, chandelier. Um, because it's really fun to do intricate stuff. Um, because of the illusion of detail, right? Mm. Like, this is just a fundamental understanding of how these shapes work. Um, in perspective. So, like, we're curling... You start out seeing part of that, but yeah. it's it's because of how it's curved. Right. So then you'd see the backside as well because it's curved away from the camera, but it's towards your eye a little bit. Yeah. So then, like, as this comes over the bend, it just kind of disappears back onto that side. And then when I come back over here... It's going to straighten out and then show the other side again. Yep. Uh, I really do like the flat stylings of this we have a weird old chandelier in our basement that has like <laughs> what is it like roman gladiator chariot yeah racing. like weird chariot racing and stuff on it it was hung up in the dining room of our house and we quickly took it down and replaced it <laughs> oh maybe i'll take a picture and include it so that you all can just see this wild thing yeah. Ah, oh, it's so cool. I have a hard time with these kinds of things, with, like, shifting it and making the... Making it, like, look good 3D. and, like... This has to do with perspective. 
Um, so yeah, I, I'm actually Noah's perspective. This but yeah, is, that one looked a little bit not yeah enough. Well, and this is why I'm taking my time because stuff like this, even though I enjoy doing it, is very difficult. Yeah, and part of that is also designing. Uh, to avoid the tangents and stuff like that. Because if I put it where I wanted it to, it would have made a tangent with this side here. Mm. So, like, you can see it, like, it's all the same size as it goes yeah. around. But because of how it's facing the camera, uh, or facing your eye, it looks like it's wider at certain points. Ah, oh, it's so cool. Like, going, doing the flat method rather than just kind of, like, circles. Yep. And I fully believe that in Pokemon, the reason why they did it in circles is because, one, that's easier to animate. Mm. Two, it's a lot easier to shade. Ah. So, um, I think, actually, one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this closer. Squish. Like that. Yeah. Four pairs. <laughs> Every time. Well, it was traumatic. Yeah. He got so scrungly. He did. <laughs> <laughs> but um now looking at this guy like his secondary fires on the dangly bits uh -huh. i never realized that they were like coming off like forward and back from the piece uh -huh. i thought it like i wonder what the no oh, because this was a 3d this was with free 3d sprites it wasn't with yeah pixels still yep it's with 3d was it i thought no you know the or Kalos was the first 3D, wasn't it? Uh, Kalos was on 3DS. Now I can't even freaking remember. It's been so long. Um, um, uh, Was it sprites? They were sprites. Look Maybe. at that. I, I think that's too thick, actually. It's a lot thicker than the other side. Right? It doesn't... Well, it depends upon how angled it is towards you. Yeah, I was going for more of an angle, so maybe not. Because, like, when you see this guy in motion, those things, like, unfurl and bounce around. That is true. Like, thinking about the... Uh, like, a, it's similar to a spring now. It's coiled metal. Yeah. It's got to have some tension and going to wreck But the somebody. thing is that it's raw iron, which is really freaking heavy and rigid as a metal. So. Yeah, so good luck, little man. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, it's a ghost. Ghosts can do shit. Exactly. Um, oh, I was going to say something. Now I forgot. Oh, yeah. The the offshoot one here. Mm -hmm. Are you also going to make it flat or are you making those? No, those are rounded. rounded. Hmm. Um, I'm actually doing it in such a way that it looks like it's welded. Oh. Like that. Yeah, so it's not just Pokemon where it's just kind of sticking out on a... Exactly. <laughs> And again, like, I'm not trying to make this, like, super fancy. I'm still trying to stick to, like, more of a, um, cartoon-style, like, Pokemon, but it's not, like, Pokemon-style. Right. I've talked before about how, as much as I love Pokemon, I feel like they don't have the best, uh, style in terms of, like, coloring and design work and that kind of stuff. Well, they need to make it very basic. They do. I can't imagine I am animating that going and drawing to... as many episodes as they have and going I'm nearly as intricate. This just a little bit. And with the, the amount of plushies they do, like we looked at their sitting cuties plushies and they have like, I think they did one for like every single Pokemon in every generation. And some of those Pokemon get very complex. Yeah. To the point where the plushies just look ludicrous. Ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Widening this a bit because it felt like it was too thin. Little thick boy. There we go. And because this is dark. Your ghosty goose. My ghosty goose. I love my ghosts. Who are some of your other ghosts? You got Bennett. Yep. Yeah, you just got a whole bunch of meanies. They're not mean. They're you just gotta, misunderstood. You got. <laughs> You got a cute little voodoo doll yep. type thing. 
you've got the will-o'-wisp so the traditional like take Ghost. you take you away walk you into a swamp so that you're never seen again yep um little children <laughs> You were just listening to that song today. I was. Um, then you've got the DMCA. <laughs> you've got Haunter, who is like your pretty typical poltergeist. Yeah, just kind of haunt, haunt, spooky. Wow, Haunter, huh? Yeah. Haunt. It's even in the name. Yeah. Um, haunt, 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 haunt. You got your Umbreon, which is all about like moonlight. That's a dark shadow. That's not ghost. Yeah. And. three there should be one more um miss magus miss magus yeah which i think miss magus um nope that's a spoiler for later episodes <laughs> okay i almost forgot you Wee. <laughs> Wee. all that work that you did gone. no because the fundamental is still there gone Sure. It's gone. Um, Silly little man. He's a little guy. Hello, man. Hello, man. He's here. He is. Miss Magus. It mutters curses. Its muttered curses can cause awful headaches or terrified invasions that torment others. So that's just a mental illness. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Personified <laughs> head trauma. <laughs> that one's just a shyster being like, hey, guess what? I'm going to be the manifestation of your negative emotions. <laughs> Have a headache, fucker. Get good. I don't want to get good. Ooh. Sorry, I'm taking a bit of time. Usually I take less time on these, but... There's a bit of detail on this guy. There There's really like is. The, as simple as it looks to just draw a circle, here's the earth, it, like... I'm it, not going to do any line work around the fire. Okay. Because, uh... I like the style of shading that you're doing this time with the... Right. So, yeah. That looks cool. And then, once the he's, color is on... He's eeping right now. He eat then. He's eating. <laughs> when he gets his uh, his then color, he'll then he'll turn up. Wah, wah. Indeed. But that's my guy! There they are. Two Pokemans from Generation 5. We've got Volcarona and we've got Chandelier. Hope you guys like this video. Check out the other ones for earlier generations and stay tuned for future and current generations as they come out. We are getting them done. If you like it, let us know in the comments or by giving us a like. Yeah, let us like know what your subscribe. Pokemon is. Yeah, what's your favorite from Gen 5? I'm curious. All right, guys, I hope that you are taking care of yourselves. Drink your water. Do what you can. Like and subscribe if this is something that you're interested in. And also check out the coffee if you want some information on other things that we do. We appreciate you guys. We could not keep doing these videos without you. Yeah. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.